hello namaskar and uh, bonjour so right now we are at uh, elora uh, very close to aurangabad and uh, elora caves uh, were the second uh, was the second monument that was added to the unesco world heritage site from india the first one uh, is the ajanta cave and uh, elora caves uh, i think there are about uh, 33 or 36 caves in total and uh, it's quite spread out i think it's it's spread out about 3 kilometers and uh, right now i'm standing in front of the uh, most popular and the most magnificent uh, cave number 29 and uh, this uh, cave was uh, ded dedicated to lord shiva and uh, the cave has been uh, cut from top to bottom which is something i i don't know how to imagine it because you're standing so high and you are just looking down imagining what is going to look like so it, i was just uh, i did not uh, i couldn't gather how in in that time by the way this is like almost uh, uh, this is more than almost 1500 years old because this was constructed between uh, 6th century ad and uh, 11th century ad so uh, yeah uh, when you enter uh, elora it's this is like the first sight that you have and you will definitely go wow wow, wow what this is just incredible and they've just cut one whole rock uh, i think it's about uh, 150 feet deep so uh, i've just climbed up and i'm just uh, trying to gauge how high this is this is very very high like it's quite incredible and you know the carvings another uh, like beautifully depicted they have just tried to show uh, their you know the, they have tried to show emotions they have tried to sto show the stories from those times and they have also uh, you know uh, ensured that every every god gets their due respect it's done in such a way and the idea behind this is that it is supposed to be a rath which is uh, uh you know like it has you can you can if you see from up like you will find that uh they have made this huge dome and uh, there uh it's lord shiva was supposed to sit and uh, then there's this whole wooden sort of structure like not exactly wooden it's all rock but it's supposed to have that uh, wooden feel to it and there are elephants in the front and uh, uh on the side there you can you can probably make out that there are wheels so it was designed in such a way uh so it's quite 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 brilliantly done and uh uh they have also there's a part where they show uh, the whole ramayana in like eight lines of uh rock cut uh, depictions that is also very very fascinating i mean um, it's i don't like it's it's difficult to understand how humans could have done something like this even today i don't know like maybe with the advent of technology you know augmented reality and virtual reality maybe yeah it's probably easy today but going back 1500 years 2000 years we did all of this like this is all in india and yeah it's it's quite incredible the history of this place hmm bet you would love to come here and uh, i'm spending about couple of days in aurangabad uh, tomorrow we have some more visits and today the day ends with elora <laughs> Hello, namaskar and bonjour. So we are in the last stages of our tour of Maharashtra, and uh, today we have come to this huge uh, lake, or more uh, famously known as the Lonar Crater. Uh, it is actually 
uh, one of the four uh, known hyper velocity impact comet sites in the world and uh, that's why this place is quite special uh, it took us about four hours to reach here so it's quite far and the crater itself is known to be formed uh, about uh, between 10,000 years to 200,000 years ago so it is actually quite it goes quite a while back uh, this this quite uh, this this there's a lot of greenery that you find here. Uh, there's some forest land and hence it has it, it has its own ecosystem. Uh, the lake is usually green because of the high amount of algae that you get here. Um, and uh, uh, it's, it was a long drive. So if you really if somebody is really interested in geology maybe or uh, something like if they want to see like a crater site, I think this is a great place to come to. Uh, and uh, I think it makes an, another interesting sighting in the state of Maharashtra. So I've gained uh, more insight as I've traversed through the fort. Uh, firstly, it's quite large, it's spread across on quite a huge piece of land. And uh, the others, what they did was uh, they made this, uh, this the major part of the fort on top of a hill, and uh, that uh, made it quite impenetrable uh, until uh, Khilji came. Uh, he had this uh, brilliant strategy. So, so basically, you cannot uh, uh, climb the fort from behind. So, what uh, what the others did, they did not have a wall behind because it was not required. But what that also meant was that there was only one entry and exit route for the fort. So, what Kilji did, Kilji did, he basically uh, cut off that route uh, going inside the fort and uh, Yadavs were, uh, you know, they did not get the supply, they could not send supply, they could not get supply and ultimately they had to surrender and uh, the Yadav Green collapsed. So uh, behind me is uh, Aurangabad's very popular uh, monument actually the most popular I would say in the city uh, called the Bibi Ka Makbara. At uh, first glance it will immediately uh, remind you of the Taj Mahal because of its uh, striking resemblance uh, and uh, there is some some correlation because uh, Aurangzeb the one who got this uh, place constructed the mausoleum he just like his father Shah Jahan uh, got this constructed after the death, after the death of his beloved wife and in her education he made this and uh, this uh, this construction happened in back in the 17th century is uh, what I've read it's uh, if you have seen Taj uh, you might not be overwhelmed or anything by looking at this but at least uh, uh, it does catch your attention when you enter inside and uh, the whiteness of it is always quite nice to see so uh, I think it's a very interesting place and a must visit when while you are in uh, Aurangabad and uh, fortunately it's not too crowded at the moment uh, the last time I had come here it was quite crowded so yeah